This is lab eight in the cat specimen. So we've already covered the dog, but we will go over the cat. It's very similar. Um, I will point out a couple things as we go along that may be a little bit trickier in the cat. All right, so the same thing we're starting up here in the neck. So this is latissimus dorsi for orientation purposes, and this was your homo transversarius. So reflect that stump. You're looking for the longest capitis and longest colli. So longest capitis will be the more lateral one right here. So there'll be a lot of fat and fascia to remove again. And then longest collie is on the midline there. So here in that hole, you're seeing actually both sides of longest collie. So here's the left side and here's the right side. And both of those run along that midline. So longest collie, longest capitis here. So then we have scalenus. So if you reflect your latissimus dorsi, you have scalenus running down. It may look a little bit different in the do than in the dog, and it may be a little bit trickier to pull apart those pieces because they're very thin. And in the cat, sometimes they tend to shred. So scalenus from here down here, and then there's a little piece here, and then a little piece along this dorsal edge right there. So a little bit different shape than the dog. All right, serratus ventralis, which we've already done. Serratus ventralis cervicis. Serratus ventralis thoracis. Should have already seen that. And then you reflect that ventrally. And you're looking for serratus dorsalis. So again, that aponeurosis here. This is serratus dorsalis cranialis. Right there. And you want to cut through that aponeurosis, just like you did in the dog here. And you go along and just cut through it and reflect that down in preparation for the next lab. So just reflect that muscle like that. So that's serratus dorsalis cranialis, and then we move caudally to serratus dorsalis caudalis, which in the cat, you just have to look for, so you move along, and these are going this direction, caudally, and then you have these change direction just a little bit, and we'll go a little more cranially. So these muscle fibers are part of the caudalis portion. So I, I think it's actually a little bit more definitive than in the dog. So hopefully you will find that to be true also. But all this is the caudalis portion. You cut through the aponeurosis on these as well. And then just flip that down. OK. So our abdominal muscles. Oh, I forgot the external and internal intercostal. So here you just pick an inter intercostal space. And you have external intercostal muscles on the outside. You make a little window, open it up, and try and peel apart those layers. So external here, and then internal intercostal in there. OK, now we can move down to the abdominal muscles. So you have external abdominal oblique, which is the most extensive, running all the way here. So in my cat, it was a little tricky because of this previous incision, so I had to be a little careful going around that. But when you reflect your external abdominal oblique, be really careful because they're very thin. The abdominals on the cat are really paper thin. And so you just have to try and pick it up in little bits and kind of cut and pick it up and move along slowly and then reflect it down because your internal abdominal oblique will be sandwiched right to that external. So reflect the external abdominal oblique down. And here, if we move to the ventral midline here, we'll see this rectus abdominis muscle here, right there. And then internal abdominal oblique is here. So then you want to cut that along the lumbar origin there. And then very carefully, because again, it's sandwiched to the next layer. So peel up this little paper thin abdominal wall and lift up the internal abdominal oblique. And then you have transversus abdominis. So again, I have that hole because of that incision. But here's transversus abdominis there. OK. So now we move on to that inguinal canal. And so the caudal edge of external abdominal oblique, I'll flip it back up. That caudal edge is going to be the inguinal ligament. So where my finger is, this caudal edge is the inguinal ligament. And you have. In this cat, it was actually a neutered male cat, but we still have the spermatic cord coming through, which is kind of helpful. So in the male, the spermatic cord is covered by the vaginal tunic, which is the fascia surrounding it. And this area right here 
is going to be your superficial inguinal ring. So where that spermatic cord is coming through the epineurosis of external abdominal oblique. So superficial inguinal ring. So we'll reflect our external down just a bit and our internal. So in the dog, you hopefully, in the male dog, you'll have a cremaster muscle coming off the caudal edge of internal abdominal oblique. But in the cat, we don't really tend to see one. But if it was here, it would be running right along this right here. We just don't really have one. Some cats have one, but not this one apparently. All right, so then we have transversus abdominis here. And then when you are inside the peritoneal cavity here, that will be where you would have the deep inguinal ring. So it's not a distinct structure, but it's where that fascia is reflecting onto the vaginal tunic as it passes through that inguinal canal, if you think of that toilet paper tube again. So you have the one opening inside, that's the deep inguinal ring, passes through the inguinal canal, that's the tube, and comes out the other end, which would be the superficial inguinal ring. So that's where that spermatic cord is passing through. And I believe that should be up for lab eight.